Welcome back to Boneset Ranch. We just added a new vehicle to the ranch. Today's video goes from this to this. That's right, we've taken an old Kawasaki and electrified it. Oh, it really gets on it. <laughs> We picked up this old Kawasaki quad that had seen some better years and was very clunky to ride at best and was going to need just a lot of work to get the gears going and the engine running smooth. My wife wants it for moving things around the property and she was going to have nothing of riding the way it worked originally. So we decided to take it apart and remove all of the gas engine and transmission components and I'll electrify it and bring it into the next century. <laughs> now the shaft's fighting me. Oh, this is it. So I need to find inside of there a gear that I can work with. I removed the entire engine, left this little bit of the transmission that connects to a drive shaft that drives the rear wheels and this part comes off of here like that and I need to find a way to make this connect to the motor so that I can hook it up here and then run. To power this I picked up a kit from Amazon that included the motor, the sprocket, the chain, a motor management system, the throttles, the key, basically the things I'd need. So this is the part off the transmission that needs to go into the drive shaft. And I need to find a way to make this connect to this. Now, it's provided a sprocket. That could potentially go on the end here and then line up with the chain. I ended up cutting down the shaft and welding on the sprocket. The ongoing challenge was finding a way to hold the sprocket in place while the torque of the motor applied the power to the wheels and that was quite a challenge with a lot of chains flying off. With the wheels off the ground, no problem, but it's when you put the vehicle on the ground and put weight on it that the torque really gets obvious. So this is the bike torn apart. Everything that I had put on it previously for testing the concept has been removed, painted, adjusted the way I think it needs to be adjusted so when it comes back on it'll all work. I've cleaned up and painted the area where the new um, components go. And only there because I want to know that this is going to work before I spend too much time, you know, cleaning all of this out and cleaning all that out and then repainting it and then putting all the body work back on and the seat and everything. I want to see if this thing will be usable first. So this is the kit I got from Amazon. Together, all the wiring was done and I just had to pay close attention to what I was hooking up here and the motor seems to work fine the charger works great but the battery has its issues because you know I have no power now however if I plug into the battery here this should take hours to charge and you see that um, there's a green and red light it should be two reds as it's charging, but that's not what's going on. However, with this on, I can make the motor run. So my next step of reinstalling the motor onto the bike now with um, everything hopefully getting adjusted to where the chain will stay on and I'll be able to drive. What I will be able to do is plug in the charger to my portable battery and run through this battery into the motor um, and test to see if the chain stays and if everything is good for the next step. 
the next step will be to attack this battery. So, as you can see, it's been on, it's supposedly charged. I unplugged it, and this is how much I get. There you go, that was it. I think we're ready for a road test. Okay, so here's what I'm working with. You can see the yellow battery. That is a um, standalone AC battery for running small tools and that sort of thing. I've got the charger plugged into it and it plugged into the battery. And of course the battery running everything else. Now, with the problems with the battery is not charging, I'm not getting a good 30 amp reserve of power for the motor all I'm getting is the three amps that comes out of this charger and so when I try to move this thing with any kind of a load it doesn't move very fast or very far but what I have been able to do is show that I can go for a bit of a distance the chain is not popping off anymore the shaft is staying in place the thing does move me sitting on top of it as long as I'm on level level ground but I can go a, you know several feet on just the little three amps of power so once I've figured out the battery problem I will have the ability to get going on this thing I've got this all working I've got power so in the morning I'm gonna be back down here put this sucker together, this battery together, and we're going to go for a ride. Because now I can... So 
So now I can give it all it's got, and now it's going to be fun. All right. Okay, it's ready for its maiden voyage. Get it out of the shop and on the road. The battery is rewrapped. I found that there was two battery cells that weren't getting a good connection. I got that soldered in better and it seems to all work properly. I've got the controller set in place away and it's just ready to go. The uh, splicer for the chain came off. I'll have to put that back on. I don't know if that's going to be a weak link or what. Use that foot. So it works. Uh, it has a couple bugs to work out and I do need to put the rest of it back together which includes putting the plastic fenders back on. I need to build a box that holds the battery that uh, makes it a little more puncture proof. I think that's a good location for it if it fits with the body parts that need to go back on still. I need to get the front brakes working. and. Beyond that, I think it's uh, good to go. The next time you see this should be in Wyoming and we're trying out some trail riding. Thanks for watching. <laughs>